Coming up, a vandal in the schoolyard. Can an identikit image identify the culprit? A daring snatch and grab raid. Can the thief be found before the food disappears? A diamond dealer in the street. Are they fakes or are they for real? And a kitchen catastrophe. Can a splatter pattern catch the culprit? Hello and welcome to the show where kids solve crimes, just like real detectives. Yep, our clever sleuths will be searching for clues and testing their powers of observation to see if they can catch their culprits. Yeah, and over on Ellie and Isabel Street, a suspicious character is lurking around. But can the girls prove he's up to no good? Oh, brother, it's that Jake again. Calls himself Jimmy the Jeweler these days. He hangs around our streets selling precious gems. Look, here's a couple of his regular customers. He does a roaring trade. His diamonds only cost three sweets each. And he claims they're all real. But you know what I suspect? Those gems are fakes. And I'm going to prove it with some rock-hard evidence. With Isabel's help, she's going undercover. And she's going to buy us a so-called diamond ring. We're about to find out if Jimmy's jewels are the real deal or if he's selling us short. Good luck. Did you know that diamond is a crystal made from carbon and it's the hardest naturally occurring material on Earth? The only thing that can cut a diamond is another diamond. Cool. Looks like Isabel's done the deal. Now, let's have a closer look at this so-called precious stone. Hmm, it looks perfect. Perhaps a little too perfect to be real. It even has Isabel fooled. How can I test whether or not that diamond's a dud? I know. Let's compare it to Mum's engagement ring. I know it's real. Dad said it cost a small fortune. Let's pop it under the microscope. Wow, it really sparkles. Interesting. Now let's look at Jimmy's. Hmm, it sparkles too. But hang on, check this out. See that black wedge? Mum's real diamond didn't have that. Maybe it shows that Jimmy's diamond isn't the real deal. But I think we need a bit more evidence. Come on. Diamonds are worth millions. So criminals try to trick people by selling fakes. But clever diamond experts use seriously high-tech machines to catch the criminals out. This diamond is being tested for nitrogen. If there's no nitrogen in it, it's a fake. Genuine diamonds also grow unevenly. This one has straight lines, so it's a fake. But this one is the real thing. Another tricky thing about diamonds is that heat travels through them quickly. This clever gadget measures that. It can tell instantly whether a diamond is real or whether it's been sold by a master criminal. Oh dear, you don't think my diamond rings are fake, do you? I'm really worried now. See, I paid big money for this and I love it. I wear it every day. It matches you, with You so didn't much. happen to buy it from Jake the jeweler, did you? No. <laughs> okay, that's probably a good thing. Although we don't know for sure. Mm. Maybe I should check it out with my trusty magnifying glass to see if I can find one of those dark wedges that Ellie discovered. How's it looking? Um, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, I 
I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Although, to be honest, I'm still not really sure if it's fake or not. Yeah, well, mm. I can't wait to find out. But, hey, I wonder how Isabel and Ellie are going to prove once and for all that Jake the Jeweler's diamonds might be fakes. Well, I think that mystery is about to be solved. We reckon Jake has been selling fake jewels. Under the microscope, the stone he sold us looks suspiciously different from Mum's real diamond, but we need more proof. <laughs> Isabella and I have one more test that will show the truth about Jimmy's so-called diamonds. <sighs> Mum breathes on her real diamond when she's looking at it, and it never fogs up. See? Now let's do the same with Jimmy's. Aha! It's gone all misty. It's worthless. Bad luck, Isabel. That's exactly where it belongs. <laughs> Just like that Jake belongs behind bars. Great detective skills, Ellie. Real diamonds have natural flaws created by the forces of nature that made them. Not like Jimmy's fakes, they're made in laboratories. See those dark wedges? They're the sign of a fake diamond. Real diamonds bounce light around inside them, so no dark wedges are visible. And as for that breath test, real diamonds like Mum's disperse heat straight away. So by the time Isabel looked at it, the fog had cleared. But fake diamonds stay misty. Diamonds might be a girl's best friend, but that Jake's not. But we'll get the last laugh. Those sweets we swapped were fakes as well. Looks like our clever fraud investigators got the better of Jimmy the jeweler that time. Well, maybe he deserved it, because he's been milking his customers for quite a while now. Oh, speaking of milk, Alex and Holly are about to run into a very milky crime scene very soon. Mum spotted a mouse in the house. So Holly and I are giving the whole place a good spring clean. There you go, Tabby. Let's take a break. Oh, no! What happened here? It's milk! And it's gone... ..everywhere! We need to find the perpetrator of this dreadful crime. It must have been someone who loves milk. Let's think. Kenny the baby is crazy about milk. Ah, and so is Tabby the cat. And you can't rule out that pesky mouse. Which of them could it have been? Holly, that's evidence. I'm surprised Tabby isn't looking up this milky mess. At least she's not destroying the evidence. Better secure the crime scene. Cordon off the whole kitchen so nobody comes in. Then we'll try and figure out who perpetrated this horrible crime. Did you know it's hard to spill liquid onto duck's feathers? That's because they contain tiny air pockets that bounce droplets straight off them. That's why we say, like water off a duck's back. Let's try and reconstruct the crime. We know the cup fell this way. But how could it have been sent flying? Our suspects are Baby Kenny, Tabby the cat, or that pesky mouse. Good idea. Some measurements. Aha! That's way too high for Kenny to climb up. So he's off the suspect list. All right, now let's measure the size of the splash. The splatter is almost two metres wide. 
That means it was knocked over fast and splashed quickly. The perpetrator was really moving, but not fast enough to beat our investigation. Boy, those investigators are working quickly. They are. And you know what? It's just as well because real detectives say the best evidence is found soon after the crime has been committed. In that case, Alex and Holly are doing everything right. They are. They've made some pretty important measurements. Mm -hmm. Got out the tape measure. Uh, they've looked closely at that splatter pattern. They did too. And they're taking detailed notes. All the right things. Well, in that case, I reckon we can expect to find the culprit very soon now. But hey, let's head back to the crime scene. Holly and I are on the hunt for whoever created this catastrophe in the kitchen. One thing's for certain, the perpetrator sure was in a hurry, judging by the splatter pattern. So, we've already ruled out baby Kenny. That leaves Tabby the cat and that pesky mouse on the suspect list. Hmm, thinking about it, a mouse is tiny. There's no way it could push over a full mug of chocolate milk. So I think we can rule out the mouse. That only leaves Tabby. Better make sure the evidence stacks up. Aha! Yes, a clear patch where there's no milk. I better sketch out the shape. Hey, it looks like a mouse or something very like it. I've got it. Tabby's play mouse. And it's soaked in milk. Tabby must have knocked over the milk while chasing her toy mouse. That cat is not as innocent as she looks. Great deduction, guys. Splatter patterns made by spilled liquid can give forensic detectives all kinds of clues about how it was spilt. The shape, size and direction of the drops shows they were made in a hurry. But what clinched the case was that the toy mouse's shape left a telltale clear patch on the cupboard. Our clever detectives were spot on by deducing that Tabby knocked over the cup when she was playing with her toy mouse. Oh, no. Now Holly started playing with the mouse. Careful. Or there might be more... Ah! Spilt milk. <laughs> oh, what a boring newsletter. Blah, blah. New principal started this week. Whoa. This is more interesting, Bonnie. The school's been vandalised. The sports shed was broken into and balls went everywhere. A canteen milk crate was knocked over and the staff room window was smashed. The newsletter says to report anything suspicious. Hmm. If I recall, when we came in early on Monday, near the sports shed, we saw a strange man wearing a dark tracksuit and fiddling with the lock. And Bonnie saw the same guy near the spilt milk. And yesterday, she heard the sound of breaking glass. And the same man in the same running shoes was there. That can't be a coincidence. I bet he was the vandal. I know, I'll draw his face. It's called an identical image. The new principal's gonna love me. The world's oldest drawing of a human face was found in France. Ugh. The portrait was drawn on a cave wall with chalky rock. And it was drawn 27,000 years ago. Ugh. Let's see. He had eyes like this, and his mouth was like that. And, oh yeah, he had glasses, square ones. 
That's hopeless. I'm a terrible drawer. I need someone better. What am I thinking? Bonnie won last year's art prize. OK, Picasso. Let's nail this vandal. With my fantastic memory and Bonnie's brilliant artistic talent, we'll have the perfect identikit. Then we'll be the new principal's favourite students. Identikits are also done on computers. Faces appear on the screen and witnesses choose which one best matches the suspect. They start by choosing male or female, then skin colour and type of hair. The computer then comes up with possible lookalikes. If the face doesn't quite match, the witness clicks no and the computer comes up with another set of faces. If there are two faces that almost match, they can be combined. When the final choice is made, the face is printed out and the police start looking for the suspect. That's it, I'm inspired. I'm gonna create an identical picture of you. So I'm gonna need you to turn this way. Yeah, what? Nice big ears, a funny looking nose, and some googly eyes. Hey! What? That doesn't look at all like me. <laughs> it totally does. You are a suspicious looking character. Aha. Uh -huh. You see, that's where you might be making a big mistake. Really? Yeah, you see, not all criminals look suspicious. Hmm, I wonder if Ellie and Bonnie know that. You might be right. Well, let's head back to the school and find out. A vandal at our school has left a trail of destruction. Bonnie and I spotted the same man at each crime scene. So I've got Bonnie drawing an identical picture. Okay, so he had a biggish nose. And he was fairly old. So give him grey hair. Don't forget the glasses. Yeah, perfect. She's finished. Bonnie's drawn that suspicious character exactly right. Let's go show it to the new principal. Excuse me, sir. We've got an identical picture of that vandal. Oh, oh, oh no! How embarrassing! It is the new principal. Nice try, girls. Usually, identical drawings based on eyewitness accounts are very useful in tracking down criminals. Skilled artists can create incredibly lifelike pictures, narrowing down the list of possible suspects and helping police find the perpetrator. But I'm afraid it was a case of mistaken identity this time. When the girls saw the principal at the scene of the crimes, he was just taking notes for his report to the police. Oh well, at least our new principal has a lovely portrait for his new office. Consider it a welcome present. <laughs> that was a quick recovery. Sure was. And you'll be pleased to know that thanks to quick work by the new principal, police arrested the real vandal a week later. Oh. It was a local mischief maker. Really? Well, yeah. it's good to hear they sorted it out. But school's not the only place where mischief happens. Check out Gabrielle's backyard. Let the picnic begin. Hang on. I swear I bought out four sausages. Kip! Oh, what? Something's had a go at the corn chips, too. Who are the known food thieves in the neighbourhood? Next door's dog, Ralph, is definitely on the suspect list. Or perhaps that bird that hangs around. It'll eat anything. Let's get some more supplies. What? OK, a sausage was bad enough and a couple of corn chips. But chocolate cake is going too far. Nobody nicks my favourite dessert. Step away from the blanket. This picnic is now a crime scene. Did you know that food-feeding animals have bigger brains than other animals? 
their extra brain power lets them develop strategies. That means they can steal the food without being caught. We're combing the entire area to see if the culprit left any clues behind. Crumbs? We'll never get a beak or a bite mark from those. But what's Kip found? A red feather. So it was a bird. Well, that rules out Ralph from next door. That leaves the bird. But come to think of it, it's got black feathers, not red ones. So it's off the hook too. Hmm. I think it's time Kip and I hit the crime lab. Kip can search the internet while I take a closer look at the evidence. Hmm. Oh, good. Kip's found a parrot that matches. But I think we'd have noticed a red bird like that flying around. Nah. Let's have another look at the feather. It's got a main shaft at the top, veins pointing down, and tiny interlocking barbs. See if you can find this, Kip. Wow, that was quick. That picture matches exactly what I'm seeing through the microscope. Except for the colour. Now, what bird is that feather from? A turkey? Yikes, they weigh up to 40 kilos. That's more than Kip. But how come our feather is red? Come on, let's set up a stakeout. And if we're lucky, we'll catch the thief red-handed. Wow, Gabrielle and Kip sure know what they're doing when it comes to detective work. Yeah, they secured the crime scene. Mm -hmm. They carefully combed through the scene for all sorts of clues. And they did find that vital piece of evidence. Who would have thought that a tiny thing like a feather could help solve a crime? Yep, lots of feathers look very different. Mm. Take these two, for example. They've both got fluffy bits at the bottom. Oh, yeah. They look pretty similar. Mm. But if you take a closer look, you can tell that they're actually really different. See, look at their spine, for example. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well spotted. <laughs> well, it's lucky that our clever detectives had that microscope handy, because that way you can really spot the differences. That's right. Just shows it certainly pays to keep your eyes open. Mm, it sure does, and it especially does. Now the boys are about to begin their backyard stakeout. Something has raided our picnic. The only clue left at the crime scene is a red feather and it seems that the suspect is something big and bold. From the safety of our cubby house, we're hoping to catch the culprit in the act. Nothing so far. Hold on, what's that? The tree over there is rustling. Is it a giant hungry turkey? Mm, nah, it's only the wind. Hold on, now Kip seen something. The side gate's opening. And someone's coming out. Someone or something. Yikes! That's no turkey. It's Imogen from next door. And she's heading straight for my chocolate cake. Wait, she's wearing a red feather boa. Forget the turkey, we've found our culprit, our cheeky neighbour. <laughs> nice work, guys. Real forensic investigators use evidence like feathers to solve real crimes. Through a microscope, barbs, quills, veins and other parts of feathers make matching a feather to a bird species very reliable. The feather Kip found really did come from a turkey. But before the feather found its way to the backyard, it was dyed red and made into the boa worn by their chocoholic friend Imogen. Imogen's given up on her life of crime. And she got her mum to give us a whole new cake. Mmm, looks good. 
Oh, yuck. Imogen really needs to stop wearing that thing. <laughs> Ooh, feathers in cheesecake. Wow. But at least those feathers help solve a very mysterious crime. Well, with the help of some pretty impressive investigators. Mm, yep, and we'll have lots more clever investigating next time.